Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle and today we're going to be doing another fun vegan try video that you all tagged me in. Thank you again. All right, so here I've got some royal trumpet mushrooms. I believe that they're the same thing. Royal trumpet, king oyster. Wow, they really gave me a freaking medley here. Oh my God. <laughs> this big old horn. This big boy looks like, um, well, you know what it looks like. Fortunately, I got two and this one has two bigger ones. They're gonna be easier to slice up than these small ones. As you can see, they're pretty hard. There's no good way to talk about this, really. There's no proper way to talk about this, but they're not soft like other mushrooms. They're pretty, I was gonna say rigid, but really nothing feels right. They're gonna lend themselves nicely to like a chewy texture, meaty texture. <laughs> So silly. <laughs> Grow up, you're 30 years old, lady. So I'm gonna take some of the biggest ones. Oh my God, look at this fancy little guy. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Oh, I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. You got a dump. This looks like some sort of porcelain figurine. These are fun, honestly. I wanna grow some of my own. Hold on a sec, I'm kind of thirsty. That reminds me, I wanna thank today's sponsor. Bright Cellars. If you know me, you know your girl loves some wine. Bright Cellars is a wine club that matches you with wines from all over the world. All you have to do is take a quick seven question quiz and then they develop an algorithm for your flavor profile. Once you try a wine, you can go ahead and rate it so that the algorithm will even more finely tune your taste. One thing of course I love is that their packaging has the smallest carbon footprint in the industry. Each box comes with these wine education cards for each bottle that outline tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures and origins, etc. Let's have a little try, shall we? We've got a 2020 Petite Syrah. Oh, tastes like the 4th of July. I would like to drink this with like a nice chocolate cake. Best paired with zucchini bell pepper, eggplant skewers, watching thriller movies during a storm. Well, they know me. No mention of chocolate cake though, but I guess I got a little bit more research to do. That's what I'm doing when I'm drinking this, I'm studying. Thank you so much Bright Sellers for giving my followers a limited time offer of $100 off their first box and a free wine tote. Click the link in the description to take the quiz and get started today. All right, I'm gonna finish this and let's get back to the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is slice off the tops, the caps on these mushrooms and don't throw them away, save them. You can chop them up and put them in sautés. They have a great texture. We just don't need them for this. And I'm also gonna cut the bottom part off so it's easier to slice with our mandolin. So let me do that really quick. Now I've got a mandolin, which I never use, but I'm very grateful to have a use for it today. Do, do, do. All right, so be really careful, y'all. Be really careful when you're using your mandolin. It's no joke. Be so careful. Mandolins freak me out. Think of me. Oh, that's not how it works. All right, so we got that done, and now we're going to sort of marinate slash boil these in some seasoning. So let's head over to the stove. We're gonna be using sage, nutritional yeast, and all-purpose seasoning. So these are gonna be nice and flavorful while we're boiling them, which is also going to help with the texture of these. So we're essentially cooking them through and infusing them with a flavor bomb. Now the recipe also says you can use portobello mushrooms for this, so that might be a nice alternative for people if you can't get your hands on these king trumpet mushrooms. Burr, 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 burr. I can't help it. I added my mushrooms right into my seasoned water, brought them to a boil, and then I let them boil for about five minutes or so. You can test it by using a utensil, fork, or knife, or whatever. Essentially, we need it to be cooked through enough so that we can wrap them around our drumstick. I put a bowl under my strainer so I could save that like nice, flavorful, delicious water. The next thing we're gonna do is take a towel. I'm using a reusable towel because it's way more sustainable than using paper towels. And actually that's what she did in her TikTok as well, which I appreciate. And we're just gonna press some of the excess liquid out of there so it's not dripping, drenched. What we're gonna do next is get our drumsticks ready. So what I will say is that she had a bit of a leg up because she had these like fancy schmancy reusable wooden drumsticks that looked really cool, but I don't have those. And I feel like most people probably won't have those. So I got some lemongrass, which is what I've used for drumsticks in the past and they work pretty well. And they have like that nice lemongrassy flavor, which is delightful. So we're going to just slice these up. I tossed mine in the freezer to make them last longer, but we're gonna slice these up and then we're gonna start wrapping our mushrooms around them. I don't know how many this is gonna make. I feel like that's a lot of wrapping in order to get like a kind of meaty drumstick. Again, hers was like, uh, 
It was like wrapped around like an hourglass figure so it automatically makes it look more like a drumstick. So I don't know, this could only make like two or three. I have no clue, but we're gonna give it a shot. Let's chop these up. And I wanna use these ends because they're thicker and they kind of are slightly reminiscent of, you know, a drumstick shape, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna start with these. Probably gonna be very hard to cut because they are frozen. Oh my God. <laughs> Definitely let them thaw before you do this. Unlike me, I did not plan ahead. Let's go, there we go. Let's start with these four and put these back in the freezer. Again, I just feel like this is gonna require a lot of these, but maybe I'm wrong. This is why it's really, really useful to have the bigger mushrooms because they give you these like bigger slices that can really hold it together. And the small ones are less than ideal, but we can still work with them. Hers were like super long. And I've already decided that what I'm gonna do with these is after I wrap them up, I'm gonna freeze them because I just don't see them staying together if I don't do that. And she didn't do that, but she had some holy grail mushrooms that were like, looked like they were six inches long. So far I've used a huge amount of these and I'm only on my first one. I was trying to get the biggest ones I could find so I don't really know what else I could have done. I do think the freezing will help, thankfully. Okay, there's like one drumstick. I think that's good. I, I was right. I think we're only gonna make like three drumsticks. Looks like I have a bunch of bologna around a lemongrass shoot here, but it uh, looks like a little meat rose or something like that. <laughs> I'm just gonna repeat this whole process and then pop them in the freezer and then we'll move on to the breading. Okay, so it turns out wrapping those was a little bit of a nightmare, probably because my mushrooms were smaller or shorter than hers, but these were the biggest ones I could find. I decided to make a little adaptation to the recipe and I rehydrated some yuba or tofu skin and I wrapped the mushrooms in the yuba. So this should kind of help to hold it together. Also, unlike the recipe, I'm gonna freeze these. I'm gonna freeze these for about four hours. You could probably freeze them overnight just to make sure they're really solid and staying together um, because I just know these would fall apart if I don't do that. So that's my little spin on it. Um, I will see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I ended up waiting overnight. I let them freeze overnight and I am so glad that I did you guys because Legitimately, I have no idea how those drumsticks were gonna hold together once we started battering them. I just, it didn't make any sense to me. I'm blown away that she was able to do that, that's great, but I'm, I'm grateful now in retrospect that we did this. You may wanna let them thaw out just for a second once you take them out of the freezer. And if you wanna rub a little oil over the plate before you put them in the freezer, that could be a good idea too, so they come off easily. But otherwise, if you just let them thaw for like five minutes, you can just take them off. So I took them out of the freezer. They're nice and solid. They're not going anywhere. And the first thing we're gonna do is mix together our dry mix. So for our dry mix, we're going to use some all-purpose flour, or you could use spelt flour, some corn flour, all-purpose seasoning, paprika, mixed herbs. I'm just using like oregano and sage, chili powder, and salt. Then we're gonna mix that up. Then for our wet mix, we're gonna do about a half a cup of plant-based milk. I used about three heaping tablespoons of my dry mixture. In her recipe, she said one tablespoon I think but I needed more so you know do whatever feels right to you and then you're gonna mix that up and we're gonna take one of our drumsticks and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dip them in the dry mixture first just get them evenly coated then we're gonna move them over to our wet mixture really get it all covered up and then back to the dry mixture and you know what time it is you know what time it is it's time for hot oil <laughs> I'm just using vegetable oil. I'm wearing a tank top. That's not wise for hot oil, but it's really hot outside right now. It's like 90 degrees. So here we go. Make sure you knock off any excess uh, dry mix off of your drumstick before you put it in hot oil. And we want our hot oil to get to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 180 degrees Celsius. And once we get it to that temperature, we're going to put it in. I just want to point out how brave I'm being right now. I'm, uh, I'm doing it. There's hot oil and I'm using it. And a tank top too, in a tank top. Is it brave or is it stupid? It's stupid. Ooh, I've got some paper towels over here that I'm putting them on so they can lose some of that excess oil. 
Look at these beauties. Oh my goodness, they look so good and chickeny. Let's go, baby. I wonder if you could have, you honestly, if you took the oyster mushrooms and you had wrapped them around and then frozen them, that probably could have worked too, but I'm excited to try it with the extra layer of the yuva. That's gonna be super cool. Wow, these look so good. Uh, okay, it's the moment of truth, y'all. I'm excited to try it. Let's see, let's see how this tastes. Mm, smells good. Mmm, mmm. Oh, hello. Hot damn, that is tasty as hell. My lips are moisturized from the oil. The, the hint of lemongrass is actually really nice. I had an idea. The biggest obstacle in this recipe is like wrapping these up and having them stay together. There could be a world where we would sort of toss the oyster mushrooms into a food processor and get them into like chunks and then possibly maybe mold them around the drumstick and then wrap them in the yuba. I don't know for sure if that would work. I haven't tried it, but that's a food for thought. That's what I'm thinking about right now while I'm eating this. But y'all, this is delicious. This is like a nine out of 10. Flavor wise, nine out of 10. Closeness to chicken, eight out of 10. Not exactly, obviously, you know, the, the mushrooms close, not quite, but close. I still think jackfruit might be the closest, but delicious. Like it looks really good. Um, it tastes delicious. I'm about to pour some maple syrup over this because that's what I want to do right now. They're a bit time intensive, but you know, all good things come to those who wait. The seasoning she put in the recipe is, I'm excited to eat these. It, I, it made me four of them. I wish there were more. I'm glad I tried it. Really delicious. I think you'd like it. I'm really grateful you guys tagged me in this video. Keep tagging me on Instagram and on TikTok. Just send them my way and I will always give them a whirl. You know, I just wanna thank you guys for sending me this recipe. If you wanna hang out with me between videos, I live stream on Twitch two to three times a week. I also have a Discord I'm on almost every day. So you can chat with me there if you want to. All of the links are in my description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you wanna see some behind the scenes footage of the making of these videos. With that, oh my God, I have enough grease on my hands right now. I could be, I could become grease lightning. And I did a great job conquering my fear of hot oil today. Oh my God, oil just splashed on my face. Have a beautiful day. I bid you adieu. I will see you in the next one. Mwah. Hello, welcome to this afterthought. I uh, am eating these all in a row. Put maple syrup on them. It's real good. Also, there's sometimes a lot of water trapped inside. Be careful, because that was an unpleasant surprise. I think it's from them defrosting. Look at this grease. Okay. Well, stay greasy.